So I'm gonna start by seeing how well informed you are on your Wizard of Oz trivia. Okay, so let's start with a very easy one. Who plays, well, no, start even easier. Who is the main character in The Wizard of Oz? Dorothy Gale. All right. Who plays Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz? Judy Garland. All right, can you tell me anybody else? Oh, wait, 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 right here. And I heard Dorothy Gale. There's one for you, Anna. All right, so any other character? Can you tell me any of the other characters in The Wizard of Oz? The Tin Man. All right, excellent. There you go, Tatiana. Okay. Glinda, the good witch of the north. Very good. The lion. Yes. Okay. And Toto. And Toto, too. Okay, now we're leaving one. Scarecrow. Yeah, we got to get the Scarecrow in there. And the wizard. Oh, the Wicked Witch. There you go. Joe, I'm not going to even go how come you knew the wiz Wicked Witch. So, not going there. The Munchkins. Boy, that's a twofer. All right, and somebody said the wizard. I heard somebody say the wizard. All right, here, and here are some for later because you're going to need them. <laughs> One more. All right, now, can you tell me any of the actors other than Judy Garland? Now we're, now we're stepping up to Wizard of Oz Trivia 102. Ray Bolger, Ray Bolger. excellent, and he was the scarecrow. Bert Lars with the Cowardly Lion. <sighs> wow. That was going to be my extra surprise trivia question. Wow. Hold on to that. Okay? Hold on to that. Um, who did play the Tin Man? Jack... Haley. All right, and who played the wizard? Frank. Frank, somebody, Frank Morgan. He played the wizard. He played Professor Marvel. He played the carriage driver. He played the doorkeeper to Oz, and he played the guard letting people in to see the wizard. Five roles. Frank Morgan played. All right, now, the extra special trivia question was, there was an actor who was scheduled to play the Tin Man, but he had problems with what was in the powder to make him have that silver color. Buddy Ebsen. Chad Clampett, Buddy Ebsen was going to be the Tin Man. All right, so... Why in the world are we, and I got to give you like half the bag for that one, but it's up here. So why am I starting with that this morning? Well, at the end of the year party that I do with my class, end of the year, and it was Friday that we had this party. I do this one-man presentation of The Wizard of Oz, where I play every part in about 10 minutes. And at the talent show about 10 years ago, 
I did that. If some of you remember that. I remember Mansoor was one of the judges. That's one of my memories from that night. So I, I have a blast doing this. And as I was getting ready and gathering all my stuff, because I have all kinds of props, a witch's hat and a broom and a, a sun shield that I wrap around my body for the tin man. I have all kinds of things that I use. And as I was looking at that, and I got to thinking about what the principal characters are looking for, what they're going to the Wizard of Oz to hopefully get fulfilled in their life. You have the Scarecrow who's looking for, if he only had a brain, he wants wisdom. The Tin Man wants a heart. He wants kind of some meaning and, and faith and something to hold on to in his life. The cowardly lion, of course, wants courage. And then Dorothy, well, Dorothy's lost. She's just lost. She wants to get home. She wants to get to that place of comfort, return. She wants to return. And as I was thinking about all these, I thought, this really describes the disciples as they are huddled in that room and it's Easter evening in this scripture from Luke. And if you're wondering to yourselves, okay, how many Sundays are we going to hear about the risen Christ and read about the risen Christ and hear about Easter? I mean, Easter was a month ago, over a month ago. How long are we going to hear about this? Well, my answer to that is, I hope never. I hope we never stop talking about the risen Christ. I hope we never stop talking about being the Easter people. I hope we never forget what Easter shows us. Do you remember the slide that was up there at the beginning? Because the question for us is, are we going to be like that, those feet sticking out from under the house, squashed, useless, going nowhere? Or are we going to be Easter people? Are we going to live out the resurrection faith? And what does that mean? So here we are once again with an Easter story. And it is appropriate because we still are in the Easter season. And so here we have these disciples. They're crushed, they're heartbroken. They have forgotten the teachings and the wisdom that Jesus gave them. Their purpose in life has been shattered. It was destroyed, nailed to a cross, dead, buried. And there have been tales coming to them all day from women, from Peter. And now most recently from Cleopas and this other disciple who say they met Jesus. They saw Jesus raised and with them. And they saw an empty tomb. And what did this mean? And so here they are at this point of whether they too are dead and buried or whether or not they will believe. They need wisdom. They need heart. They need courage. And they needed to be reminded of who it was they were with. And with Jesus, they were not lost. 
they had purpose. They had direction in their lives. We all face moments like that where we are tempted to just sit this one out, perhaps even sit out the rest of life. We've been too beaten down, we've been too bruised, we've been too hurt. We've lost direction. Life has lost its salt, its flavor. And sometimes we feel like we're useless and just to be thrown out. And it's in those times especially, those times when we're huddled down and don't know what to do, where to turn, it's those times especially that in some way Jesus comes to us. Jesus comes to us and says, remember, remember who you are. Remember that you are not alone. Remember that I am with you. But Jesus does something more. Jesus comes back and he sees that they are bewildered. Do they really believe this? They're on that dividing line. They're on the fence. Is this too good to be true? Is this real? Can I count on this? Is this something I can hold on to for the rest of my life? And Jesus says, see that I am real. See that I am really with you. It is not a dream. I am not a ghost. I am not just some spiritual light. I am the resurrected one, resurrected by the power of God. And it's that power that is with you, that undergirds your souls, that challenges you to go out into life, but not on your power alone. For we do not have God in our hands. God has us in his hands. Now, what is all this about Jesus saying, See my hands and my feet. Do you have anything to eat? And he eats broiled fish. Don't you find it interesting that it tells us exactly what they gave Jesus to eat? And if you'll notice, as you read John, in his resurrection accounts, there is a story very much like this. And what was going on in the church at the time was this kind of struggle between do we follow Jesus, the crucified one, or do we follow Jesus, the risen one? And what difference does that make, you may wonder? Well, the people who wanted to worship Jesus, the risen one, the risen Christ, visioned a world pretty much divorced from pain, divorced from trials and tribulations, just glorified life and existence, divorced of the flesh, divorced of the suffering of the world, kind of retreating into yourselves and your spiritual life to be pure. And the church that said, no, we follow the one who suffered and died, who was real, and the suffering 
crucified Jesus is also the risen Christ. And he calls us to be his presence in the world and to live as he lived. There is your purpose. There is what you are to be and to do in the world. And if you do other, then care for the people that Jesus taught you to care for and you saw him reaching out to. If you do otherwise, then you really have lost what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And that's why Luke and John show us Jesus is really with you And Jesus is the one who says, you will be given power. The interesting thing about the Wizard of Oz and another way it relates to our Christian lives is that fulfillment was not instantaneous. The scarecrow did not instantly have a brain. Cowardly lion did not instantly have courage. The tin man did not instantly have a heart. And Dorothy had to go through the whole trip to the yellow brick road and back to Oz again before she could finally find her purpose and was no longer lost. It was not instantaneous. And it was not instantaneous for the disciples. Luke tells us that Jesus says, go to Jerusalem and wait. And for us, as we live our Christian lives, it's a cycle of learning from our experiences as we walk with Jesus, of falling down and picking ourselves back up of being surrounded by caring people who support us through tough times, who celebrate with us in our joys, but who walk this path with us. For none of us is it instantaneous. We are in this together. We're caring for one another. We're traveling this road together. So that like the disciples, when our moment is right, we step up into whatever God is calling us to do at that moment. Because we have been preparing. The disciples went and they prayed. And I'm sure that they cared for others in the name of Christ. They were at the temple glorifying and praising God. And that shows us so much about the Christian life. That we prepare, that we worship, that we praise, and that when we are ready and when we are given the opportunity with power beyond ourselves, we shine a light for Christ. So, When are we going to stop hearing about the risen Christ? I hope that the church shouts, never, never. Because the risen Christ is the one who calls us, who shapes us, and sends us out into the world In his name, amen.